Good morning, and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Stephen for this liturgy for Sunday of the Resurrection. Our parish community respectfully acknowledges the first nation's people of this country and their intrinsic connection to the land on which we gather. A particularly warm welcome is extended to any visitors who are joining us today, and we hope you will enjoy being part of our worshiping community here at the cathedral. To enable you to participate fully in the Mass, a copy of the weekly newsletter containing the music for today's liturgy is available on entry at each of the doors. In respect of the sacredness of this place and our liturgy, please ensure that your mobile phone is switched to silent. Today's Mass is being live streamed. Our celebrant for this Mass is the Archbishop.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. For 150 years, believers have gathered in this cathedral on this day to celebrate the heart of Christianity and the heart of human life, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The last word goes not to death, but to life. And he is that life. He stands among us. He comes to us. We come to him. We come wounded by sin, bearing the death of sin within us, but finding in him the mercy which is the life bigger than death. So as we enter the sacred mysteries on this Easter day, let's greet the Lord as he greets us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the God who is life have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life.
solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your spirit rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power and because God was with him, Jesus went went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are these witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead. And he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his love endures forever. Let the sons of Israel say, His love endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. He is right and raised me up. I shall live, I shall not die, and recount his mighty deeds. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord.
has become our paschal sacrifice. Let us feast with joy in the Lord. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter set out with the other disciple to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in. He saw and he believed. Till this moment they had failed to understand the teaching of scripture, that he must rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A large stone was rolled across the entrance of the new rock-hewn tomb where Jesus was laid. It was the custom to seal a tomb of this kind, not only with a large stone, but with other seals as well, to prevent the incursions of grave robbers and wild animals. The stone would weigh at least a ton, and it would usually be on an incline to make it easier to roll down into place and harder to move uphill to dislodge. The women, we are told in the Gospels, saw the stone being moved into place and they must have wondered how on earth they would move it if they were to return to anoint the body of Jesus properly after the Sabbath. The blocking stone must have seemed to them and to others like a cosmic full stop, symbolizing the end of all the hopes and expectations they had attached to Jesus. It's what we hear from the disciples on the road to Emmaus as they speak of the Jesus whom they don't recognize, their companion on the way. Our hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. 
they say. The stone wasn't just over the entrance to the tomb, it was over the entrance to their heart. It blocked their way into the future. It, it signalled the end of hope. Their heart, like the tomb, it seemed, was sealed forever. No wonder the women ask as they go to the tomb in the early morning, who will roll the stone away for us? But then when they arrive at the tomb, the stone, to their astonishment, has already been rolled away. We're not told by whom. At first, they think it's the work of grave robbers. And without entering the tomb, they run to tell the disciples what they've seen. Peter and the other disciple run to the tomb, and Peter it is who's the first to enter the tomb, which is empty, seeming to confirm that grave robbers have been at work. But then we have an odd-seeming detail. Peter sees the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself, we're told. Seeing the risen Lord will come later, for now, they have to put the pieces of evidence together and work out what has happened. They have a stone rolled away, an empty tomb in which there are linen cloths used to wrap a corpse, but no corpse. Grave robbers seem the most logical answer. But the disciples will eventually come to recognize that Jesus is risen from the dead. And with that, the world, and certainly their world, will change forever. They will come to understand, as we do, that God has rolled away the stone and has raised Jesus from the dead against all the odds. They'll come to understand, as we do, that rolling away the stone is the unblocking of hope and the birth of an unimagined future, far from being a cosmic full stop, the stone now opens a cosmic doorway to a life that nothing and no one can take away. The disciples will come to understand that the linen cloths lying on the floor of the tomb are all the things left behind by the resurrection. All the old fears and anxieties, the old failures and depressions, the shattered hopes and expectations. The Welsh priest poet R.S. Thomas writes this, there have been times when I have looked in and seen the old questions lie folded and in a place by themselves, like the piled grave clothes of love's risen body. The disciples will understand that all the old questions have been left in the tomb like the linen cloths. Questions like, is there a future? Is there a reason to hope or even to live? Does life have a chance? Is death the last word? Does peace have a chance? Or does violence have the last word? These and all the old death-dealing questions are left rolled up on the floor of the tomb. And the vision of love's risen body will give the eternal answer to them all. The face and the name of the answer is Jesus, the firstborn from the dead. He is the love 
whose body is raised. It will take time to focus all this properly, which is why Mary Magdalene, when she first sees the risen Jesus, thinks he's the gardener. And then there's a vision of angels, but what they say, why are you weeping? Quite apart from who they are, only adds to Mary's perplexity. So it takes time to see the Lord. On this Easter day, we see all our old burdens and questions left lying in the tomb. There we leave them as we turn from the tomb like Mary to be greeted by the risen Lord and to greet him in turn. Once our eyes are opened and focused, to see him and to hear him is something beyond our wildest dreams. Yet here he is, seen and heard. And he is no dream, but the reality at the heart of all reality, the only thing that is ultimately real. The story told today of the stone and the tomb and the linen cloths and the encounter is the story of each of the brothers and sisters we initiated at the vigil last night, all 13 of them, and what a gift they are to us. But it's also the story of each of us who gather on this Easter morning Together we come, like the first disciples, to the tomb, wondering who, if anyone, will roll the stone away. We see the stone already rolled away, opening the doorway into a new world. We see the empty tomb and the linen cloths rolled up on the floor. Old burdens, old questions we leave behind as we turn to meet the one who comes to meet us, speaking of peace. Like the disciples, we will go from here. We will leave the tomb. But we will never cease saying what the early Christians said. We have seen the Lord. And the one whom we see will be with us always even to the end of time. Amen. Brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Jesus in baptism so that we can walk always with him in newness of life. Now that our Lenten journey is, is concluded, I invite you now to renew the promises of your baptism, the promises by which we renounced Satan, the allure of sin, and all that is evil. And we promise to serve God in the Holy Church. So on this Easter day, I ask you, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. It's the faith of the whole church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and granted us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace for eternal life. 
in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The God who raised Jesus from the dead is the God who listens to our prayer and who understands what it is to be human. So let's pray now in the power of Easter faith. For the church and the whole human family around the world, that the light of Easter will dawn in their midst, dispelling all fear and showing forth the everlasting goodness of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For those baptized or received into the Catholic Church this Easter, that the light of Christ will keep burning brightly in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For all who are walking in darkness or doubting their faith, that the risen Lord will bring light to their journey and peace to their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For people taking holidays and those traveling during Easter and the school holidays, that under the protection of Christ, they will enjoy their break and be kept safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For our parish community, that our participation in the Easter ceremonies this year will make us strong in faith, confident in hope, and abounding with love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For all the, the recently deceased and for those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time, that they will be welcomed into the new life of the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. On this Easter day, Father, we pray in the power of your Son's resurrection. Listen to us and answer us for his sake, Jesus Christ, the Lord of life and death forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my Easter sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of all hands. For praise and glory of his name, for our good and the Exultant with paschal joy, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. But on this day above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death. And by rising restored our life. Therefore, overflowing with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 God of hosts, and gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you on this Easter day, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these Easter mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your holy apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary Magdalene and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, Tim, my assistant bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you on this Easter day. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O oh Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Let us pray. <coughs> Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. At the doors of the cathedral you will see, I think, yes, I can see them already, people wearing high-vis red jackets, or red high-vis jackets. They are collectors, in fact, and they will be there ready to take your tap-and-go offerings. So if you prefer to donate to the cathedral in that way, now is your chance. So look out for the collectors with the high-vis red jackets. Tomorrow morning, the Monday, the, this week is a week of Sundays. Every day is Sunday, so Easter Monday tomorrow. We'll have Mass in the Cathedral, but only at 8 o'clock in the morning, so you'll need to be early and quick. So uh, a week of Sundays, and then the Easter festival goes for 50 days. It's the biggest party in the world, 50 days of celebration that will take us through to Pentecost and to the 150-year celebration of St Stephen's Cathedral. It remains to me only to wish you all every Easter blessing. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, if you're a familiar face or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, Easter is for you, whoever you are, and its blessings are offered without question and without condition. So a very happy Easter to everyone. The Lord be with you. And with you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter celebration and in his compassion defend you from every attack of sin. Amen. Amen. May God who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his Son give you the great prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the joy of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to the feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May the God who is our joy and our life, the God of Easter, bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Just before we go, I do want to pay tribute to the Director of Music and the organist, Christopher Tricolis and Dominic Perezinotto, and to the choristers who are here, but also those who are not here. Uh, the contribution of their ministry through these holy days is quite unique, so I thank the Director of Music and all of those who have been part of the music ministry. So I ask the deacon now to send us forth from this Easter moment. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.